Roger Wood's harrowing experiences of Black Saturday provide the inspiration for King Lake 350. Roger's message that the book is true and should be taken seriously is important. Do you have a message for teachers and students studying King Lake 350? Um, this book is, um, is real and uh, it's fact and it happened. Um, and I'd like to, them to take it um, fairly seriously and realise that um, a lot of, there were a lot of people that were, um, were killed, a lot of friends of mine were killed um, by the bushfires on the day and, um, and a lot of people were injured. Um, so it is a fairly, fairly very serious um, uh, disaster. King Lake 350 is the call sign that I was using on, on Black Saturday. Working up at King Lake, I started at 10 in the morning and I worked um, one up, we call it, which is by myself. Um, so I worked during the day uh, and then I come on later at um, about 5 o'clock, I met up with um, my offside of Cameron Kane, who was on the afternoon shift. Can you describe the weather that morning? Yeah, I, I, I'll never forget that morning. Um, I sort of had this gut feeling that it wasn't going to be a good day. It was a, something, I just, I don't know, it's hard to explain. I just sort of had this gut feeling that it was going to be a bad day. You know, I, I just woke up and um, and you could hear hear the wind and it was howling. It was hot and it was, the, the air was just um, like it was on fire. It was just, everything was just ready to explode. Um, I um, remember coming outside and and I, um, I just looked at the ground and I looked at the trees and I thought this is just I've never seen it like this before it was just something that no moisture and it was just um, yeah just so dry and uh, and I think I, I think I told Adrian that as, as I was getting in the car to go to work. I don't know if I was down the drive or where I was, but uh, yeah, I did look at the, um, the leaves and the, and, and the, and it was just, I can remember thinking how it was a shocking, a shocking day, yeah. My, my children go to Strathewan Primary School um, and uh, the author of the book, one of the dads, Adrian Highland, his uh, daughter went to uh, Strathewan at that time as well. Um, so, you know, about a week, two weeks after the fires, um, Adrian approached me and said, you know, I'm thinking about doing something and I want to sort of get it down in writing and write a bit of a, a bit of a book and a bit of a story about, um, about the fires and sort of, I've heard a lot of good things about you and I'd like to use you as the main character in the book. Um, I, I, I wasn't too keen. I said to Adrian, um, can you find someone else, mate, because I'm not, um, I'm not, that sort of um, guy, I just, I just sort of keep to myself. I, and he kept asking me and asking me, you know, sending me text messages and I kept saying no. And after about a week I said, oh, oh look Adrian, you're not going to leave me alone unless I say yes, are you? And he said no. So everything that's in the book is exactly how it happened. He said, I want to know what you had for breakfast. I want to know what happened when you got up in the morning. I want to know everything from, the, you know, the, from when you get up in the morning to the whole, your whole day exactly and so everything that's in that book is exactly how it happened. Like I said earlier, Adrian wanted to know everything that happened on the day, what was going through my mind and what I was thinking and um, he was just picking my brains and, um, and I, 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 got it, I put him in the car. I took him down to the Talangi Tavern and we had a... Um, a cup of tea down there and had a chat to Michelle, the um, the owner of the tavern, because that was a part of the uh, part in the book. Um, and um, yeah, you could see the whole time he's planning and he's writing things down, and, and uh, he's he's sort of uh, and he's done done it well. He's done a great job with the book. I've, I couldn't have asked for a, any other better person than him to do what he's done with it, he's just got everything down and, and everything, he hasn't gone off, oh, he's gone off a little bit of a tangent, but, but it's good things that, you know, about facts and um, fires and, and what happened prior to the fire, the lead up to the, you know, with the, with the weather conditions and that. But he, he's, um, he hasn't, um, he hasn't sort of um, taken 
exaggerated a bit and he hasn't he's gone off here and there and everywhere it's, so whatever's there with regards to me is exact, exactly what happened yeah so. I've got to ask Roger because mm. you just reminded me mm. the scene at Talangi Tavern when the person in the in the car with the alcohol interlocker came mm. in yeah, yeah what did ever happen to him nothing no I didn't hear from him again I thought I thought I might he because he was really worried and it was geez, it was a funny scene he's, when he's coming out of the um out of the forest and he was in such a state and his his wife was screaming and and he was wor just worried about getting losing his license because he didn't um he didn't act, do his activate his interlock device because before you start the ignition you've got to blow into it and then you've got to wait five minutes and then you then you get you get the all clear before you can you can drive and he didn't do any of that which is fair enough. He just wanted to get out, but he was really worried about it. So no, and I did say to him on the day, I said, mate, I'm from King Lake, Roger Wood. If you've got any dramas, give me a call and I'll sort it out. But no, he mustn't have had any dramas. Well, Roger, you, you're clearly um, perhaps a little uncomfortable uh, being regarded as a hero, but in the book, you are the hero of the book. So you're a hero in literature and you're also regarded as a hero in real life. So, I mean, how does that feel? Uncomfortable. I, I sort of um, uh, a bit embarrassing. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't see myself as a hero. I, I sort of see myself as just a bloke that was in the wrong spot at the wrong time and lucky to survive. Um, and during the day, I, and there were some parts of the day that I didn't think I was going to survive. And I was just a survivor, and not a hero. And I it was just lucky that I was, like I said, in the right place at the right time, being able to. Um, guide those people to the right location um, because I was working the day and I knew where the safest place was to be on the mountain where I was going to be and that's lucky enough for those people that I've come across them and showed them where it was. So. Mm. How have the fires changed you uh, mm -hmm. and your life? Um, yeah, well they have changed me. Uh, changed everyone I'd say. Um, I, I think now that um, uh, I I live for the now now. Um, I think uh, you don't know what's around the corner. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, and that showed that, you know, people just living their normal lives, one day having a great time, next day they're not with us. In the first couple of chapters, uh, there is a scene where you are talking to a, um, a lady um, in town who's come to you seeking advice on what she should do. Mm. Can you take us through that? Oh, yeah, you know, I'll, that? I'll, never, I'll, I'll never forget that. She's, you know, we, we're not supposed to um, tell people to what, leave and uh, they've got to make their own. We've just got to say, you know, uh, um, just uh, activate your fire plan and whatever your plan is, do it. Um, but this lady, she was at such a, I, I was at the, in the watch house at the police station. I just opened up in the morning. Um, and uh, like I said, I was, um, I'm on by myself for the day. So I, um, I take the car home. I'm on call during the night. I finished at two in the morning. Um, on fr I started Friday at six and finished at two Saturday morning. And then I s slept, I was on call. Any jobs come up, I'd go out. So I started at, um, 10 in the morning, so I'm up at the police station at 10, opening the doors. About half an hour later, I think, um, the uh, the door, we've got a buzzer thing on the door and opens. It's this lady's at the counter and she's she's in a bit of a dither. She didn't know what, she was looking pretty concerned and she said she's only been on the, living up there for a very short time, King Lake, and she doesn't, not used to, and not used to being in the bush or she's a city girl and, and she wanted to know what, what she should do um, on a day as bad as it was. This is before any fire started, this is earlier. And I, I just, yeah, I, I said to her, and I'm glad I did, um, if I was in your position, I would take my family and go downtown and spend the day with, um, with friends or family down in, in the city out of here, because it's gonna be a bad day. And, uh, and she sort of, she sort of, shoulders sort of dropped and she said, oh, 
okay, thanks, you know, and she, and she said, I'll do that. And she went and, um, and I thought, oh yeah, she'll, she'll go. I didn't hear any more, I, I assume she went. If that uh, happened again in the future, uh, we're going to have bad days in mm. the future, would you say the same thing? Yep, sure. I, I, if anything has come out of that, is you only get one chance at life, and it um, doesn't matter, you know, if you've got to pack everything up and you've got to get in the car and the hot and the hassle of moving everything down town for the day and putting yourself out a bit, you only get one chance at life. Um, and I think um, I think you'd be crazy not to move, not to not to you know get out, evacuate, or leave town if it's a code red day or if it's a bad day, you know. So I think I think now with the the codes and the the warnings, um, I think people will take a take more heed and um, take it more seriously now that what's happened on this day. Mm. What do you hope students will learn from reading King Lake three hundred and fifty? Um, oh, I think if, if, if they're ever um, <clears throat> in that position where um, they are facing any kind of danger, um, I would like to think that they would stop and think and, um, and think safety first, like don't put themselves in a position where they could get themselves hurt or killed. People have learnt now that the bushfires can happen, um, and they can happen quick, and they can come on onto you before you know it, which is what happened on Black Saturday. So, I think people, um, I would hope that they would uh, not be as complacent as people have been in the past, living in bushfire prone areas. Um, and I know on some occasions on it's hard on you know to on a really hot day and windy day all you want to do is stay in by the air conditioner or stay by the pool, but you really have to think about what's happened in the past and think what could happen to you and your family and to get out when you can and well before any danger presents itself. There is quite a lot of information about fire history and science. Have you learnt much from reading the book? Yeah, I found it quite interesting. Um, a lot of a lot of points there that I didn't know, and um, Adrian's has enlightened me with with what's happened in the past and and the technical side of how fire works and and he's put it he's put it together and he's 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 put a lot of thought in it and he, he's put it in a way that it's interesting and not boring. I've been at King Lake for seven years now, and I think two or three years prior there was a fire that was heading towards town. Um, conditions weren't as bad as Black Saturday, but um, and it rained and it stopped the fire just before it got to town, which was uh, a good thing. But that fire on that day, that was not your ordinary fire. That was something from hell, and it was out to kill. Um, it was just, it was a a bad, bad day, and I'll never forget that. You know, never forget that day. Um, I'd like to forget it, but. Someone has to be there and do the recovery and the um, and no matter who it is, you're only human, and you're going to be traumatised um, because of what you're subjected to. On the way up the hill just this afternoon, and um, I, uh, my partner up there, he also lives in St Andrews, Ron, and um, I gave him a lift up there today, and um, we were talking about how the the, it's come back, the growth has come back thick and it's come back, you know, it's come back quickly. But let's hope we don't have that drought and all those same conditions again for a long, long time. Um, but safety first. You only live once and uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs>